So now we're going to do the evaluation of the back. Um, for this, we want to make sure we get a full inspection, so I'm going to ask you to take off your gown. Thank you. So you want to start with a general inspection looking at his posture. Um, is he standing comfortably? Is he curved to one direction or the other? Um, can I ask you to take a step forward so I can take a look at your back? I want to do the same thing from the back. Again, looking for is the spine appear to be center in the midline or is he curved one direction or the other? You want to also look for the normal curvature of the spine. So you want to look for the convexity in the cervical spine, excuse me, the concavity in the cervical spine, convexity in the thoracic spine, and then another concavity at the lumbar spine. All right, so now what I'm going to do is palpate the various landmarks. You're going to start with the paraspinal muscles. So you're going to start up here at the base of the shoulders and palpate along the paraspinal muscles all the way down to the sacrum. Again, looking for muscle spasm or any pain or tenderness. Then again, do the same thing for the spinal processes in the center, looking for any evidence of tenderness. So now we're going to talk about range of motion. I'm going to ask you to turn sideways just a little bit for me. So what I'm going to ask you to do is bend forward like you're trying to touch your toes. Now straighten back up. Now bend backwards as far as you can. Now straighten back up. All right, so now we want to test for rotation and lateral bending. But want to make sure that you're doing it primarily from your back and not from your hips. So I'm going to stabilize your hips for you. Now I'm going to hold on to each hip. So what I want you to do is turn towards your right. Now turn towards your left. All right, now for the lateral bending, try and run your left hand on your side, and now the other direction. All right, thank you. Finally, I want to check for scoliosis. So I'm going to ask you to do is bend forward like you're going to try and touch your toes, and I'm going to look from behind. So I want to get even with his back and see is one side of his back higher than the other, um, suggesting a curvature of the spine. And you can straighten back up. So for the evaluation of the hip, we generally have the patient lying down. You may see this been done in other positions, but we generally recommend for our purposes you do it with the patient supine on a bed. We're going to start with palpation of the major landmarks. So for that, I'm going to actually have to have you roll over onto your side. So I'm going to have you roll towards me. So we're going to be assessing for structures that are best felt with the patient's hip flexed. So I'm going to ask you to bend your and bring your knee up towards your chest and then just kind of relax. So the first thing I'm going to palpate is the lateral excuse me, the greater trochanter of the femur, which is on the lateral aspect of the hip. Next, I want to palpate essentially what's your sit bone, which is the ischial tuberosity, which is deep here in the muscle. So I'm going to palpate deep under here. So I'm palpating for the ischial tuberosity. And then finally, I want to palpate along the sacroiliac joint over here. You're going to want to make sure you do that on both hips and have the patient roll the opposite direction to do the opposite hip. Well, I've got you on this side. I want to check the range of motion of partially of your hip. So I'm going to have you straighten your leg, and I'm going to stabilize your hip for you. And what I'm going to do is ask you to take this leg and move it behind you as far as you can for testing for extension. I mean, you can bring it back. Now, if the patient has any abnormalities in the active range of motion, I can test it passively. So I'm going to take your leg and do it for you, and then bring it back. All right. For the remainder, I'm going to ask you to roll over onto your back. So we want to check active range of motion of the hip. So I'm going to start with hip flexion. So what I want you to do is take this leg and bend it up towards so you bring your knee to your chest as far as it will go. Okay, and relax. All right, now we need to just adduction. So what I'm going to ask you to do is take this leg and sweep it out to the side as far as you can make it go. And now bring it back, and now cross it over as far as you can cross it. All right, so now again, if there was any abnormalities, I would test this passively. So I'm going to move your leg for you. Take your leg and bend it as far as it will go. Test for adduction by bringing it, excuse me, abduction by bringing it out, and then adduction by crossing it over. All right, and make sure that the patient is allowing you to do all the motion and they're not doing the motion for you. Finally, we're going to test internal and external rotation of the hip. This is typically done only passively. So I'm going to lift your hip up for you. Bring the hip to 90 degrees with the knee bent at approximately 90 degrees. All right. So for what we're talking about here is motion of the hip. And so for motion of the hip, internal rotation is moving the foot outwards, and external rotation is turning the foot inwards. And relax. And then again, make sure you test that on both sides. So now we're going to evaluate the knee joint. 
So again, just with any other exam, it's going to start with a general inspection. We're going to want to inspect the knee primarily at 90 degrees is the best way to do the inspection and palpation. So I'm going to have you bend your leg for me and put it in that position. I want to look at both knees. I'm going to have you bend both knees for me for the moment. I want to look to see, is there any evidence of asymmetry? Is there any redness or swelling? When I'm palpating the knee itself, I need to make sure that I'm working along the joint line as well as along the ligaments that attach it. So I'm going to start superiorly with the quadriceps tendon, palpate down to the patella. From the patella, I can palpate the patellar tendon down to the tibial tubercle. From there, I can assess the joint line. So I can feel the tibial plateau as I come across the joint line. And as I move laterally, I can palpate the fibular head. You also want to pay special attention to the medial and lateral colligaments. So on the lateral side, the lateral colligament up here at the femoral con medial lateral femoral condyle, and then palpate back down to the fibular head. So on this knee, we have the medial collateral ligament. So we'll start off with the medial femoral condyle, palpating down along the joint line to where it attaches to the tibial plateau, and then finally over to the anterior bursa on the anterior aspect of the knee. So range of motion of the knee, it's best to do this with the patient lying down so you can get full range of motion of the knee. So you want to, again, start with active range of motion. So I'm going to ask you to take your knee and bend it as far as you can, putting your heel as close as you can to your backside. And now bring your leg out and straighten your knee. All right. If there's any abnormalities in this, I want you to do the same thing with this knee. So I can compare side to side, bend it as far as you can, and now straighten it. If there's any abnormalities in this, we want to test this passively. So I'm going to move the leg for you, and you just let me move the leg. So bend it as far as it'll go, and then straighten it all the way. So for the evaluation of the ankle, um, we're going to start with the general inspection. So again, remember you want to do this on both ankles. Um, and again, we want to inspect the ankle from all sides, again, looking for any obvious deformities, redness, or swelling. For palpation of the joint line markers, we're going to start with palpation of the tibio-talar joint. We want to be able to palpate both the lateral malleolus as well as the medial malleolus. Moving down onto the heel, we want a general palpation of the calcaneus but also the calcaneal tubercle where the Achilles tendon attaches and then upwards along the Achilles tendon. So now we want to talk about range of motion. I'm going to have you relax your foot a little bit for me. So what I want you to do is start by pointing your toes up towards the sky for uh, dorsiflexion. Now point your toes towards the ground for plantar flexion. Now I want you to bring your foot inward for inversion and bring your foot out for eversion. So again, any abnormalities in the active range of motion, we'll do it passively. So I'm going to take your foot and try and move it up as far as I can, and I'll bring it down, move it inwards, move it outwards. And again, for eversion and inversion, there's very little range of motion. Finally, for the inspection of the foot, we want to make sure that you get both the uh, dorsal surface and the plantar surface of the foot. So we'll inspect the dorsal surface of the foot and palpate at the metatarsal phalangeal joints. Now I'm going to lift the foot upwards so I can look at the inferior surface of the foot and palpate at the base of the forefoot. If there's any pain or specific abnormalities, you can palpate the individual um, interphalangeal joints on the foot, but it's not done as part of a general normal exam.